Hi, Bob from Pine Grow here with another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is to quickly style your Bootstrap projects with the Pine Grow web editor using SAS and a free product from Bootswatch.com. While I will be talking primarily about Bootstrap, these same SAS techniques can be applied to any of your other Pine Grow projects. Styling can be the difference between a good and a great page. PineGrow has a built-in compiler that allows you to work with the SAS style sheet language without the need to manually recompile after every change, all without having to fiddle with the command line interface and Ruby or Grunt to interpret your SAS style sheets. This means that you can easily take advantage of powerful features like variables and mix-ins to quickly put together a great looking page. But also, one that can be easily updated with different styles project-wide. No more searching through endless style sheet rules for every instance of a particular color your client wants changed. Okay, let's get started. First, start a new page or project in PineGrow. Make sure that you select a Bootstrap 4 page. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and pick, uh, pick a product, uh, template that already has some content on it. That way, we can see the styling that we're applying right away. Okay, so now once you have this page open, if you choose, you can add additional content, as I do in the written tutorial, or we can go ahead and save this and open it as a project right now. Save. Make a new folder. And I'm going to name the page index.html since it's our only page and it's the base page. Again, this is optional. Now we're going to get a modal pop-up that asks if we want to open it as a project and click yes. Okay. So now if you notice, our project has a fixed style sheet. We need to convert that over to a SAS style sheet. The way we're going to do that is go up to page and select customize and update bootstrap theme. It'll pop up a modal saying, want to customize Bootstrap with SAS variables? And say, sure, let's do it. Now, Bootstrap, uh, excuse me, PineGrow has created a new folder for us. And within that folder are both the uh, various pieces of Bootstrap styling, but also a file called custom.scss. And what this uh, modal is telling us or warning us is that we don't want to make any changes to the bootstrap theme and the theming on this page uh, outside of this custom.scss file because then if we were to do an update we would overwrite those changes. Okay, now that we have our project set up let's navigate back to the Bootswatch page and on this page, if we scroll down, what we can see is that they've prepared for us a number of different themes, both light and dark themes, as well as um, themes that change the primary and secondary colors, change over the main fonts. Um, so we're just going to select one that is going to really uh, show us what uh, changing a theme can do. So we'll choose this minty. And to load this into our project, we're going to want to click the drop down here next to the download button and download two different files, underscore variables.scss and underscore bootswatch.scss. So let's go ahead and download those to our project. And you're going to want to make sure that you are uh, bringing them into your project into that new um, uh, folder that was just made, bootstrap underscore theme at the same level as that new file that was made, custom.scss. So we're going to save that. And then we're going to go ahead and download that other to the same location at the same level in the directory hierarchy as our custom.scss. Now, in order to use these files, we're going to have to go ahead and uh, do just a little bit of editing. Um, and if you uh, open up your project and you don't see those files, go ahead, right click on the uh, project name, hit reload project, and now we can see them um, right here, bootswatch.scss and variables.scss. So we're going to have to edit the underscore bootswatch.scss and the custom.scss 
files. The Bootswatch uh, file needs to be edited because the version of SAS that the people at Bootswatch are using is slightly different than the one that's built into Pine Grow. And the custom.scss has to be edited in order to bring both of these new custom files in. Let's start with the underscore bootswatch.scss file. You can choose to either edit it within Pine Grow simply by double clicking and it'll pop up here, or you can do it in a external in an external editor. I prefer an external editor. Uh, sometimes the Pine Grow compiler um, will be mid-compile when you go to edit and you'll have problems with saving. So it's generally safer to edit them in an external editor. Uh, and most times I even go to the extent that I'll, uh, when I do this initial edit, I'll actually close the project before I do it. In this case, I'm just gonna keep it open. So I'm gonna open, uh, again, those files in my external editor. I use Visual Studio Code and they're right here. So first thing we have to do is um, combine two lines of code into one. So the built-in compiler uh, does not like variables like dollar sign web dot font dot dash font dash path passed into an import statement. Uh, in this case, we're just importing a Google font, Montserrat, for use in the um, in the theme. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this first portion of, of the import statement and paste it here in place of the variable name. And then I'm just going to delete everything down to that closing parentheses and colon, uh, excuse me, semicolon. So now this is in a format that uh, the Pine Grow SAS compiler prefers. Save that, close it out. All right. And so now, as I said, we also need to edit the uh, custom.scss file. Right now, the only thing it imports is a single file, bootstrap, that's located in the bootstrap folder that's at the same level as the custom.scss file. So this is a relative file, uh, re uh, relative directory. So it's loading it from this folder, bootstrap, and if we look down to the bottom, we can see that the file is bootstrap.scss. The SAS compiler does not need the uh, ending, the extension for the file. So either .scss or .sass. Um, and so you can just type the file name directly. So let's bring in uh, our variables first. So anytime you bring in variables, uh, they should be brought in before the sheet that's using them, in this case, bootstrap. And the other thing is um, you can, uh, if you remember, if we look back, the file name is underscore variables.scss. So that underscore uh, just means that it's a partial. It tells the SAS compiler that it shouldn't be uh, interpreted by itself, that instead it should be brought into another sheet to be interpreted. In this case, it should be brought into the bootstrap. But when we pass that into the um, compiler, we do not need that uh, preceding underscore. So that's all we need, variables. No extension and no underscore. Now you can notice right now, I haven't closed this line out yet with a semicolon. You can see that our project uh, is completely unstyled. Um, and that's because basically I broke the compiler by uh, not finishing this line. Now when I finish it, you can see that we have our nice new styling. And just to show you what it looked like before, that's what it looked like before. And that's with our new Minty styling. So the other thing we have to bring in is that edited Bootswatch file. And my dog is feeling a little feisty this morning, as you can hear in the background. All right, so sometimes again, um, I will completely close out the project um, because uh, sheets brought in after your main import tend to uh, be delayed in, in processing. Um, but I think in this case, uh, it actually processed just fine. Um, you sometimes have to refresh the current page view after bringing that sheet in. So now if we open this up and we check with a, uh, something like what the font, we can see that indeed that's Montserrat. So it's bringing in, it in just fine. Okay, so that's great. We now have our new custom styling on this page. Well, what if we wanted to change something? So, um, 
Of course, in Pine Grow, you can just select something and then go ahead and uh, change your text or, or layout uh, to do it inline. You can also add a class if you want. Um, and that would also be um, a fine way to do it. But the correct way to do it for SAS is to make sure that we're adding any new rules into that custom.scss. So right here, when we go to make a class that says rule will be created in justified nav, we want to change that. We want to change that to our custom.scss custom file. And then if we say wanted to change that text into uh, some nice color of green, we could make a new class, create that rule. Whoop. Make sure we create it in custom.scss. And then we can go ahead and style it like normal. So, <clears throat> so what I would normally do is say I wanted that font to be, or the, the text in that area to be green. Whoops. I could just type green or put in a hex number and turn that green. But this is not the way we want to do it with SAS. Instead, we want to use a variable. And there's a whole bunch of variables that are exposed. So if we go back up and within our style sheets, go ahead and open up the variables that we just loaded in, what we can see is that there's all these variables available to us. And there's one already set up for green. Uh, with this particular hex code. So instead of putting green here or a hex code, instead we can use a variable and say dollar sign green. So that accomplishes putting this green color onto that text. Okay, so what if that's not quite the color green that we want? What if we want it to be green, but maybe a little darker? So we could change this hex code here, but again, if we were to download uh, or implement new styling, it would overwrite that. So instead, what we want to do is we want to right click this dollar sign green variable, and then we want to say customize in custom.scss. And what that'll do is it'll copy the variable over for us along with that hex. And now we can edit this here and say, okay, let's add more green. All right. So now we can see how we can easily change variables project-wide and uh, cause style changes project-wide using variables. Uh, now, one last thing I want to do is I just want to walk you through the download of another theme uh, for this project. We're just going to pick another one that um, looks a lot different. We'll try this sketchy. Uh, again, uh, what we want to do is download those two different files. Just replace out the old ones. You can see as soon as we do that, um, that we'll get changes in our page. Download that bootswatch.scss, replace out. In this case, remember that the uh, actual file needs to be edited. So we go back into our um, uh, back into our code editor. Go over to bootswatch.scss. Now, in this case, we're actively using this file. And so if I was to make changes now, the compiler would probably revert those changes. So all I'm going to do is close my project, save everything, go back to my code editor, switch out that import statement, delete that down to the final parentheses, save that, make sure this is saved. We're not going to worry about that message, just overwrite. And go ahead and reopen my project and reload. And now we can see we have our new font and our new styling, but we maintain that wonderful green color that we changed here for the lead text. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Have fun with your newfound SAS powers.